Julie Gerling, Conservative MEP for the South West. This new programme by Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, really focusing on Scottish trawlers and the North Sea. But how big a problem are discards for your fishermen in the South West? Well, um, discards are completely abhorrent to all fishermen. So any fisherman going out will get some level of discard uh, and they all find it both on, on just environmental grounds, throwing away good fish, but also on commercial grounds, it's absolutely abhorrent to them, throwing away a good fish that could be eaten, but can't be landed and can't be sold. You know, it's the worst case, awful. And this, of course, you know, being highlighted now in this programme, but, but not a new issue, is it? Not a new issue to us here in the European Parliament, because we've been banging uh, the drum about this issue now for years. Um, particularly um, Conservative MEPs, we've been, we've been demanding from the Commission that the new common fisheries policy makes one of the, the, the first priorities is to stop discards, end discards. There are a variety of different ways in which that can be done. Uh, down in Brixham in the southwest, we've got a programme that, which is cutting discards by 50%, entirely voluntary by uh, beam, beam trawlers in, in Brixham. So it just shows that voluntary action can work. It doesn't all have to be um, swinging legislation and regulation. It can work. You can reduce discards. They still have discards though, so how we get to zero, there's a lot of very complicated um, policy measures that could be taken. And I can assure everybody that an awful lot of work is being done here in Brussels to try and come up with a formula next, well it's this year now, 2011, that, that in the spring we will be able to announce a new CFP that will do that. And what about the, the Brixham project? How much do you know about what actually it, it's, it's actually done? And could this be an example you know, for the EU of the type of thing that could reduce discards? Sure. Um, it's, it's a fairly simple uh, project about reducing net sizes, um, changing net sizes rather than just reducing. It, it, it's, it's making a calculation about what species you want to, want to catch, how big they are, where you fish and using the appropriate net. And that could be um, rolled out across all kinds of fisheries all around the UK. But it's important to, to recognise that the solution isn't to say, oh great, that works in Britain, let's do it in Hastings or let's do it in, in Wales or let's do it in Aberdeen. The solutions are different for different fishing grounds. This is one of the real, real problems with the common fisheries policy. It doesn't allow for local differences. It, it's very prescriptive. You will do this, oh, all the way around the northern waters. Well, actually, that, that doesn't work. So what we're saying is, let's trust fishermen to interpret, give, give them the objectives, but allow them to interpret the rules in, in a in a way that can be agreed by scientists, environmentalists, um, to protect fish stocks, but let them talk about and make the decisions about how they achieve that end. At the moment, it's all very much sort of punitive punishment if you do something. There needs to be encouragement to do things, there needs to be help maybe to make changes to equipment, and there needs to be recognition that those fishing communities, um, they need to grow in the sense of grow their sustainability and there's so many different ways that are not in the current policy that we could be putting in the new one. And we're having very long and very detailed discussions with the Commissioner about how we get there. So we wait with interest the new proposals. Now, have you, as you've said, not a new problem, but, but people watching the programme uh, last night may have been very shocked to see healthy fish being dumped back dead and may well be asking this morning, how has this been allowed to continue? Why haven't we seen action on this before now? Sure. Now, I understand that. That's one of the biggest questions that people ask me is, you know, why does this take so long? Why can't you just stop it? Well, there was some interesting information in last night's programme. The, the fishermen were saying there's loads of cod out there, but the scientists were saying, well, hang on a minute. Um, that's a little bit early to say that. And what, what happens for legislators, regulators like me is we get a lot of scientific information and we get a lot of pragmatic information from fishermen. Somewhere along the line, these don't always agree, uh, you've got to come to an agreement on what is the scientific data and that's the job of the Commission. So all of the data that's been gathered, the Commission look at and it, we rely upon that to, to understand 
the movements of fish. It's not as simple as there's loads of fish out there. Um, the, the sea changes temperature, huge numbers of species move around over vast areas. So they may just have moved into an area. I'm not an expert on this, but I can see that there we need to, to look at the data and have a proper scientific assessment of it. So knee-jerk reactions, maybe that's how we got here. So knee-jerk reactions to get out is not the best way. We're, we're, we're putting all of our money on, on the change on common fisheries policy that will come through this year. But importantly, we're also giving the message Common fisheries policy should not just be stuck, it's not in ASPIC, lasting for five years and this is what we'll do. It has to have mechanisms that allow changes to take place depending on the changing environmental and um, commercial realities. And I think that's where we've gone wrong in the past and where we, we can improve this time. And what's your view on the value of really bringing this to, to public attention? I think you've already received some feedback from constituents. Is there a value in getting the public on board to try and end this, this problem of discount? Yes, of course. And um, yes, it's uh, 10 o'clock the morning after the show and I've already got emails, which is great because I, I can respond to those pretty simply because I'm dealing with the issue all the time. It's not like I have to rush around doing a load of work to respond. I already have my response. Um, and it's, it's great to see the public understanding it. Another part of the show, which of course um, we, we don't talk about because it's not, not po political, is asking people to change their eating habits. You know, why are they always demanding cod and haddock, albeit delicious, when we've got loads of herring out there? And if we could just get people to change their eating habits, so two things that the, the, the TV show's done, I think, is get people to ask the questions. That puts more pressure on people like me to make sure that we keep going and get it right. And also, think a little bit about their own behaviour and how they might change that. I mean, that is one of the, the other sort of points that Hugh Fermi Whittingstall wants to campaign on to get people to be, I guess, a little bit more adventurous in sort of eating fish that they don't normally go for. Do you think the South West has abundant stocks of those very kind of fish that we should be eating? There are loads of fish. Before I became an MEP and I didn't know a lot about fish, I, I would eat cod and what have you. And then when I started going down to the, south, to the coast, to Cornwall and, and Devon, and looking and also looking at the fish. I'm eating things now like megrum. I didn't I've never heard of megrum. It's delicious. You know, I would encourage everyone to try a bit of megrum. It's lovely. There there are all kinds of fish that we don't know about. And they all have they all have their place in, in your diet. It doesn't have to be cold in batter. Have that as a treat every now and then. It's like moderation in everything and all the rest of it. But I, yeah, we have to change our eating habits, I think, a little bit. And that's good because the programme really, really made that point. And when you've seen discards, when you've actually seen real fish in boxes, in barrels, in nets, it really brings it home to you. So I think mostly the public know about discards, but having seen on that programme them all just going back out to sea, and certainly Hugh Fernley Whittingstall's reaction which was almost in tears and I can I can recognize that I felt that way myself then that really comes across powerfully and and that's that's what's going to get the public interested and great you know we certainly we're not frightened of it we, we want their support because we're up against other countries perhaps who won't have the same view so we need their support